Oh man, oh man. <laughs> oh, I guess we dad music gets me jazzed up. It gets you me jazzed? Every time, David. You jizzy jazz? I'm jizzy jazz. It doesn't give me jazz, to, but, but we were, we were about to riggedy wreck it. We about are to riggedy wreck it. As I, I, like, I like your rhymes. I really do. They, there's a new one I get oh, every man. week. What was it up. last week? What was it we've talked about? Uh, Herkity Turkity Turk or was something like that? Herkity Turk? I don't know about any Herkity Turk, but I it think... It was something uh, like that her- that I made fun I, of. I, I do have a lot of sayings and things that I say that I don't realize that I say. So uh, Elisa claims that if I ever go into brain surgery and they, they operate on my brain, they crack my skull open, they're going to hear this. <laughs> That's a great tune. That's basically. Why don't you hear that tune anymore, by the way? That always brings me back to when I was a kid because you never hear it. Where'd that go? Spricely, uh, do, you know, do you know what it's called? Oh, no. What is it called? The entrance of the gladiators. Really? It, it wasn't a circus song. It was like uh that, 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 that. is that the same one? No. What is this one? That, 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 That's the one. That is the one. That's a gladiator. Yeah. Wow, that is called Entrance of the Gladiators. How about a misnomer? Well, probably back then it was more of a, I, I don't know. I don't know the history Ow. of it. Somebody look it up on, on the Wikipedia, the YouTubes or the Googles or the, or the, or the, uh, or the, 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 the grander, the grinder. Or the, or the, or the grinder. Uh, <laughs> have, you, have you been on grinder yet? <laughs> that, I uh, did. I decided to not look at pictures because I wanted to really set up my, my uh, grandpa with a, a real live data, not to be compromised by imagery. And let's just say it wasn't pleasant what he was expected to do on this date. Was that was that uh, was the meet say. up at a truck stop? Yeah, it was it was just not what you think is all I'm gonna say. And I oh, checked oh, it out. I, I can I can think of a lot. I'm sure uh uh did your grandpa come back uh with the that thousand yard stare? <laughs> <laughs> This is so wrong at so many levels. I I, st- I hope that people out there know what we're talking about with your Grinder joke, but we've already said it like on three shows. So uh, yeah, we, we that's, that's very wrong. Uh, not that there's anything we don't wrong. Know. With... And speaking of which, so I'm very liberal. So I obviously have no issues with the Grinder community whatsoever. Right? I mean, live and let live. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm going to say, what if, if it is a grandpa? All right, and let's say there's a subgroup of Grinder that is Grinder. It's a little creepy to me seeing a 70-year-old guy. And I, Now, why is that, though? Like, I don't know. I don't want to get really political on this. But a 70-year-old guy meeting at the truck stop to me has a little bit of a different meaning than, let's say, a 30-year-old buff grinder uh, client. Chiseled, chiseled chest. Know what I mean? Like, it just... You know, it just yeah. I, but why, though? Because I guess, you know what? I'd say 70-year-old monogamous, married, uh, straight people. I'd have an issue picturing that, too, I guess. Well, you know, I, I will tell you this. Uh, it was definitely a turning point in my life when I was maybe eleven, when I when oh, I found my, my my grandpa's. No, I am all ears. So yeah, my, all ears. Well, when I found my grandpa's porn stash. No. Yeah, and his liquor stash. Oh, so my 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 grandmother was it was a was a complete teetotaler. She did not like she. Probably things I she probably still things I don't drink. Uh, my grandpa used to hide his whiskey. He used to bury it out in the back, out in the backyard. He had, he had, he had a, you know, a huge property, new horses, and <laughs> and uh, he uh, he he would bury it out back. He has these little, little hidey holes with his whiskey and uh, and, and his and his and his porn stash. Because I I went and and looked at for some of the liquor and in one of the holes he had. He had Wait, like so a, so the like porn stash would it be like in plastic bags or just in dirt? It was a can. Oh, it was. So it was water. It was a can of magazines raw. Did it get yeah, stains it was on it? I, I guess is where it, I'm it, going. It, yeah, it's a coffee can. It was a coffee can. All the magazines were all rolled up inside. And that that was my grandpa's. That was my first um uh first uh experience uh to, to porn was uh digging a hole in my backyard, my grandpa my grandfather's backyard. All right, so were they were time. they young women or were they like naked 70 year old women? Oh no, no, there was definitely he wasn't interested in and then be looking like my grandma. <laughs> I guess that's normal. I don't mean grandma any age, right? I mean, if and I know that because I walked into my grandma naked once. Oh my god, you were killing me today. This is not once. going into weekend stuff. What? <laughs> is that once. a Johnny Dangerously? I did. Have hung yeah. that. Oh, good call. Shouldn't have hung around that mirror. Yeah, that was, that yeah. was a great, great. <laughs> it was a great, that was a great call. Yeah, that's movie. funny. Is that where it was um, from? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right where I, I got it from. Johnny Danger is a great movie. Um, hey, uh, hey, what's up, Jim? Jim just says great uplifting post today. All right, well, talk, like, well, talk about your post because because you started to tell me about it pre-show, and I didn't want to talk about it because I wanted us to have a fresh discussion. Now we're we're I guess we're moving on for the from the from the grandpa porn. Um, my, all right, before we do, last question on that. I found all sorts of stuff from my parents, but it was because I was mm -hmm. looking in, I was going to get a drink in the back of the refrigerator or I happened to go in the attic looking for some duct tape or something. How do you dig up stuff in your backyard accidentally? Like how, like where you just have, oh, you know, I was digging in my backyard for fun. And then I like, how? Like, come well, on, there's uh, more uh, of the story, dude. 11 year old at that age who don't have uh, easy access to, porn as they do now 11 year olds back in my day back in the 80s they were uh resource little resourceful ninjas and i i i, I found my grandpa or I, I see my grandpa you know bearing a bottle back there and uh and i had uh -huh. it and so that's that's where i i kind of thought and so and then after that i um taking to my dad's <laughs> porn stash and when i did that late later on it like a year later i kind of got the, the taste for it and then um but I would, so it's a funny story. So I, uh, my dad, my dad was a single dad. So he, uh, he was, uh, I was to my grandparents one weekend. My grandmother picked me up and I had had a, I was, and I found my dad's VHS tapes, which, which is like the next level I leveled up basically. And I left a VH, VHS tape in the, um, the VHS and the VCR. And, and for those of you who don't know, VHS is uh, back in the before times were these things where you'd watch movies on, on this little reel, you know, like in the caveman days for you kids who don't know what VHS is. No, no, Betamax anyway, would be that. that, beta. that would throw them off, yeah, that's yeah, true. But I, uh, um, and so I left it in there, didn't sneak it back in my, in my dad's room. So I come back in Monday or Sunday night, whatever my, my father, you know, Hey, what is this? Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> Who was it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe somebody broke in. And, and so you tell me, all right, so you're telling me that somebody broke into our apartment took this this tape watched it <laughs> left it left locked the door it didn't take anything i'm like yep that's exactly what happened and i stuck to my story and he's like okay he he, he let me get away with it no but he, 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 he come on he didn't he let you get away with it is the key you didn't he let get away with it because he he i don't know if he's proud of no, me he's sticking to my story. no dude i'm sure you, your kids are young Okay, my yeah. kids went through all this stuff, and they all go through the, hey, I don't know, it wasn't mine, or it was, it, I was holding it for a friend, and you laugh at it because it's like Brady Bunch stuff, right? And then you, yeah. like you don't buy, it. like it's just so ridiculous that you don't even know how to respond to it, like <laughs> because at that age, when you say your story, or when you say, oh, I was holding it for a friend, you don't realize how freaking stupid that is and how yeah. how 100 non-believable it is so i'm saying he let you get away with it Come oh yeah, on, he did I, I i didn't pull the wool over his eyes he, he right. knows that nobody broke yeah. into the apartment right but uh i stuck to my guns and uh and but i'll tell you what i guarantee you it was not the last time i snuck for him but it was the last time i left it in the vcr <laughs> to learn my lesson <laughs> When I was married, it would sort of be like I would have to explain the, the crunchy socks. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, because it was caused by the detergent. It was a brand I bought that had issues. And, yeah, that you, you know, only use on your socks for some reason. <laughs> yeah. How uh, like, do you explain that when you're married? Uh, sweetheart, what, why are your – why do your socks not move? And, uh, you know, I don't know. We're getting off topic, I think. You are getting off topic. It's not jobs. Good. It's like jobs. Yeah, jobs, all right. So this is going jobs. back to, to oh, Jim's jobs. comment. Ah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I, I don't mean to sound negative about it, but I'm going to be a little bitter. But go ahead. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. Well, all right. No, so I, post, I posted it. Yeah. So, so new, new jobs report came out, uh, you know, uh, unemployment down to 13.7%, admittedly very, very high, but uh, 2.5 million jobs added. And granted, I know a lot of those are probably businesses reopening back up uh, and employees coming back into work. Um, or it could be unemployment benefits running out possibly, but, uh, but whatever anybody wants to say about it at the end of the day, this is a sign of life. And so I posted in there, I said, look at the end of the day, guys, you know, there are naysayers, there are doom and gloomers. Anybody gives us that shit, give me a bigger one of these and get, get on the phone, get an NPC, make something happen. And so the way I look at it and I posted something similar, uh, a few days ago on LinkedIn, 
that uh, went fairly viral. Same thing. It's like at the, we can we can bitch and complain. Like somebody posted about, um, you know, in the black community, uh, unemployment is up to 2010 levels. So my response was, okay, get a POC MPC and go to market. Like, like quit bitching and get shit happening. Totally. Right. And that's my philosophy. Uh, cause if we don't, if, if we're, we're the silent heroes, if we're not making things happen, the economy builds, it's going to build, but it's, it's not going to like, we're integral to this as recruiters. So that's my, I listen, opinion. I think it's awesome. I've made a, a tremendous mistake now. Uh, so I'll say this. I sold every penny of stock and mutual fund that I owned. Never did this in my life about a month ago with the theory oh oh my god oh with the theory that okay we're in for a big a lot of potential downside with the pandemic with what's going to happen with numbers once they come to fruition and they get you know and all these companies go bankrupt that i am never a fan of market timing but i'm like you know what the odds of it being able to go down are a lot greater than it going up a lot and i figured it could raise but it's not going to go up a lot at this point so I figured that was as foolproof as anything could be. And I sold everything and I put it into cash. Now, there's something to be said about having a cash position so you don't have to worry about anything, but it's painful. And this is what sucks. I should be, and, and, I, and from a business perspective, I'm totally with you. Like I'm Mr. Optimist. I'm a motivational speaker, train, right? Like I should be so thrilled to look at your post, but something in me now, David, and this is human nature, I guess. I'm a yeah. little angry every day. I check the stocks now, and when I see they go up, my stomach turns a little bit. So and on top of that, the cash is 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 they're they're per, per, per monopoly money, baby. So that cash is. Uh, I know. Yeah, I mean, and, inflation, and, and, and we'll talk about monopoly money later when we get on to the news, right? Um, but it, it's um. So yeah, I find myself watch. rooting against a good life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like for it's human nature. Little invest and, and isn't that crazy? Which is why, like, I call, on a similar note, I used to invest in my competitors that were public mm -hmm. because at least when they would do well, instead of me getting nauseated, especially when I was president, mm -hmm. I would feel all right, cool. The stock just went up 20%. So at least I could root for them a little bit. And it balanced that that and it worked. So I put the same thing here. Um and it sucks, dude. I mean, I'm so angry. Now, I still think I'm not going to go back in now because I still yeah. feel the same way. But how it, it, it was this morning, I haven't looked in a little bit. And the market goes up nine. How is the market? Now, this isn't a financial show, but this is good stuff anyway for people to talk about with their clients. But how is the market up so much with everything going on in the middle of the civil unrest? How is yeah. that happening? And but but I think I think I think people I think a lot of people realize you know they're they're like oh shit this is the time to buy, and so it's so you, you're you're going to get a lot of folks who start to be money into it because they believe in the economy they believe in the U.S. Uh, they believe in business and and they think well shit this this is a great time to buy and if a lot of people are thinking that now granted I'm no expert you're by any means I'm just one uh, one I'm just a, I'm just a man trying to do what he can. <laughs> David, in a you, crazy God world, bless you. you are. Yeah, you know, they just... they say they needed a hero. <sighs> I'm just a man. <laughs> just a man. <laughs> Do what he can. I, I, what what was that? That was a Hugh. Was that Hugh Grant? I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm just and I can't do a Hugh Grant other than a little stutter. I'm just a man in this world looking for a woman. <laughs> Remember that little line he gave? Like the thing to what Julia Roberts. Was that? Like Love Actually, or I don't know. Not no, that wasn't out. What it, whatever. They're that... all the same, aren't all of his movies exactly the same? They're they're pretty much full of formula, yeah. They 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 definitely do for sure. Uh, a, a formula I'm, I'm generally not interested in too terribly much. Oh my now god! Now no. like movies, if they're action movies or shoot 'em ups or John Wick movies. I mean, I'm I'm down for some formula. They're, then they're fun. No, that's a fun formula. The the, the yeah. Hugh Grant thing is, I read this and it's so like like screenwriters to this day even goes to show you his brand. I know you hate that, but but mm -hmm. he would write. Um, they would write in the in the in the script a Hugh Grant type character, like for the casting directors. And of course, if you if you're a screenwriter and it says a Hugh Grant type personality, the first place they go to to cast it is Hugh Grant, right? Mm -hmm. And could you imagine having that kind of a brand 
where people put your name in the screenwriting thing for it. Like, so that was his thing, but they were always the same though, because they would, they, they, you know, the, the, uh, I, again, I wish I could do them because I do an English accent and, and, and you know, and it's just so affable. That's not bad. No, it's not good either, but. It's better uh, than mine. Oh, well, because I can do an English accent and I can do a little stutter thing, but I can't do a Hugh Grant. I've never tried it, but he's so damn charming. Even now it's like 90, still charming. Yeah, Andy. I don't know. Yeah, see, Hugh Grant. Yeah, I'm not a. Again, I don't. Uh, I don't think you've ever seen any of his movies. Maybe have I? Come I on, I have. No, you had to. Oh, Pro you're, you're, probably. Come on, dude. At least in the color probably. guard days in high school, you did. Before you were a stud. Yeah, yeah. Pre pre stud years. Right. Pre stud years. Um. It, but hey, it, in, in all, in my defense, for people who you know, color guard, I was I was spinner rifles, and I was also RTC. <laughs> I was I was doing the I was okay, doing listen, the, my the manly color guard on band. No, 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 no. Manly. I, I, I'm gonna call this one out last. The man's a man. Fire. Having your hatchet, all the stuff that you do, having all your weapons, that's studly, no doubt about it. You're a man. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm, sure. I'm definitely compensating. Uh, for my, my twirling rifles in high school is <laughs> there's nothing masculine about that, my friend. There's not one girl out. There's not one girl recruiter who's gonna say, "Oh, that's sexy." It's but but, but look at a military color guard. That's badass. No, I, yeah, I can because they're the military. Because the, they're military now. They are I was RTC, junior RTC. And I was well, and of course I was army after high school, but I wasn't. You know, I wasn't doing that kind of jazzy stuff. I was driving a tank. Um, that's but that's, uh, no driving a tank is manly stuff. And when it, it twirling a rifle is not in high school. And not being yeah, even in the band, I think it's probably better than being in the band, but it's not studly. Yeah, I was a French class. I was in French, and, and I, I was in Phoenix. I didn't take Spanish. I took French. That's smart. My, my father said, "How many? How many? How many Frenchmen do you know live <laughs> right. in Phoenix? Is there a French barrio that you're aware of that I'm not aware of?" <laughs> Could you imagine the French barrio would have like the best freaking cheese and bread? You would go there oh, yeah. just yeah, all the baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> the baguettes and the cheeses and the the, the baguettes, and the, those, um, those crescent rolls, those delicious crescents. You want a crescent? Oh, so this last night I was telling uh, Elisa because so our daughter she has this bib and some of those look like the it's like a rubber bib. It has a little trough. We call it. So she drops food and she picks it up and eats it. And so I was telling her that. So in French, it's it's a, a library is a as a. a, a, a bibliotheque in 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 french right so i was talking about how like a bib bibliotheque is like a techno bib you're you're doing your er, 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 and you got a bib i'm like oh dude that's good stuff what what kind of techno uh would you play if you're wearing a bib at the same time while you're dancing grub step and i just invented a new genre of music grub step and you're getting a bit your bib and er, er, and you're eating out of it dancing I, dude that's good stuff uh, dad's a really bad joke. Elisa did not laugh at that last night. No, it's well, it's a dad joke, you know. I thought it was brilliant, and I, it was a two for. It had like a couple punch lines in there, and, and it built. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> as you were saying, so <laughs> so back to the the market. All right, so yeah, I I should be thrilled. I'm happy for all recruiters out there, um, but a little bitter. So that's why even when I saw your thing, I, I reacted negatively, which is stupid. Like, why? Why? It, like, it's, it's not worth whatever money I would make doing that move to live life from a half full perspective on positive news in the economy. And that, like, why? And I'm not joking. Like, that's like that is human nature, and it's so stupid. Wow. Well, you know, I, I, there, so I, the post I had a few days ago where I said, like, as, as recruiters, we create opportunities and and let's turn off the dopamine machine unless it's, unless it's our show. And then that's that's cool. But but uh, it had and it got, you know, viral, I'm close to 50,000 views on it right now. But I had one guy uh, who who commented, uh, you know, I don't get what you mean opportunities. The company has the opportunity. And like, well, no, we create the opportunities. And we went back and forth, and it was basically he's trying to 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 argue a definition of a, of a word. And I'm saying, look, if you get an NPC, you find a company with a bleeding neck pain, and they're not currently looking, and you go and you you get them interested enough, and you you get the hire to happen. How is that not creating an opportunity? And I think. People just like they like just to, to, especially when their business has crumbled and they've been laid off. And like, man, I want you to be miserable too. You know, I want you know everybody wallow in my shit because that's easier. It is easier than you know. Um, you know, we we tend to 
think about it this way, right? Uh, we tend not to live towards our, our, our highest goals. We tend to uh, live by our standards. So if, you're, if your uh, bank account drops below a certain amount, you work like hell to get out of it. Yeah. But do you work like hell once it's up here? Do you really work? No, you don't. So people tend to live in this trough all the time. Right. And it's just this constant negativity just feeds and feeds. And then you have this tribalism on, on Facebook and, and, and ever and Twitter's a, just a, just a, just a, cesspool. okay. But you know, so to turn this into a learning moment, I wish we had one of those graphics. Yeah. Ding, ding, the more, you know, your point is exactly yeah. that. Like you're right. You, you work far harder to stop something negative from or you work far harder to focus on the negative than the positive, which is right, exactly yeah. what you're saying, which leads into the reason why as recruiters and as salespeople, when you want to stir that wound, as they say, when you want to get into the emotional stuff, you've got to take it down to a negative level because people are going to work much harder to avoid losing $20. That'll really piss them off and get them moving mm -hmm. than to make 20 bucks. I used to tell the story. 100%. So here's a funny one. When I was uh, president of Agilon, we would have an annual trip every year. We would take them uh, to a different place. Well, one year we went down to Mexico, to Tijuana. At, we actually went to San Diego, but we had a trip to Tijuana. And, you know, what do they have in Tijuana? Like, if you were to go down there and people say, come back and bring me back, what would a couple things be? See if you can hit the one. There's only not, not too many. You're probably going to miss this uh, one. Tequila but. with the, right, the right. worm in it. Tequila would be one. What, what's yeah. another one? There's, there's a couple uh, that come and, to mind. And, uh, syphilis? Probably <laughs> one. Yes, it's a simple sure. story. Right. For sure. Another, yeah, it's that's always a good time right in Tijuana. And I want the raw virus, like in a petri dish where you could just stick your finger in that little waxy stuff and spread the syphilis around. That's what yeah. I, want. I mean that's that's right. the good that's the good stuff, right? That wasn't I mean, the one talking, I was thinking. We're talking of. Pure There's uncut. a couple of others. It's not Kahlua, that would be another one. It's the last one. It's one of the it's one of the most cocaine. <laughs> it's not drug related. Okay. It's one of the most popular. Uh, I mean, this is boring. And vanilla, 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 powder. vanilla extract. Oh, vanilla, not, okay. It's huge. Well, well, ch chocolate's another one. Chocolate's one. You get chocolate, chocolate from Mexico, Mexico. is oh, no, yeah. it is not. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I go to the store. Would you like Belgium chocolate? Would you like? Yeah, give me some of that Mexican chocolate. Now that's the name for the hot, the, just, the hot dark, dark woman down there. Mm, it's Mexican chocolate. I'm, I'm telling you, dude. There's no Mexican chocolate. Shot. No. They told me it was chocolate, but I was pretty drunk <laughs> at the time. Yeah, and great. uh and and then the next morning I I was kind of walking funny, but I'm not gonna look like, that's neither here nor there. Let's not bring up old right, so, injuries. Well, I'll finish my story super fast. What you want so everyone was buying Kahlua or vanilla. And granted, mm -hmm. as opposed to five bucks a bottle, you know, there you can buy it at home for 25 bucks a bottle. So it's a pretty big deal. So, but people, as soon as they get in there, they go to the store and they buy two big things of vanilla. I think that's a max you're able to bring back. Now, they're walking around to save 20 bucks. They're walking around all day in 90 degree heat with two pounds of vanilla extract in a bag. What a hassle. Mm. Could you imagine? No. So that's to save 20 bucks, how much work people went through. Could you imagine? Like, and, and as it's sort of as a joke, because I realized the training story here. I would say, could you do me a favor? I don't feel like holding this crap all day. Can I pay you 20 bucks to lug around my bag in Mexico in 95 degree heat all day? How many people would say yes to that? They'd look at you and go, you know, nobody wants to earn 20 bucks yeah. by lugging that. But to save 20 bucks, they went through hell and back. Right. So my point is mm -hmm. for sales, to your point, that's why we've got to find you can't talk about all these rosy things. What you do, you sprinkle them in there. The growth opportunity, the excitement, of the, those are all wonderful. But how bored you are where you are, how unexcited you are when you wake up to go to your current job, what it's like yeah. to look at that report over and over. That's the stuff you got to talk about. Well, you know, and, and, to, and to piggyback off that, because, you know, I love piggybacking off of you, uh, Neil. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, some stuff, David. Squeal, we need to keep. We like need to keep offline, my brother. Wee, wee. Uh, but, but <laughs> well, I know off. every movie reference you mentioned, by the way. Oh, that's you. Yeah, you're you're 100 man. You're you're yeah, getting them. Most yeah. people don't. Um, but it piggyback off that. So, uh, and this is in all seriousness uh, as well. When you talk about the pain, so I, I call it a career wound. Call it whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Be your idea. It's the pain. But one of the things that I think uh, recruiters tend to forget 
is they, they, they approach it like an order taker, not a salesperson, you know, sorry, you're looking for this. You're looking for that. Well, I've got, the, you know, it's, it's an order taker mentality. And, um, and, and so, but to really, really, truly sell a, a candidate, uh, if you, if you dig around those pains, one thing that I like to do, people forget about is when you're on the phone all day, you're just kind of monotone. It's at a certain point. But when you go in there and you you want to connect with the candidate, and as they're bringing out those pains, ask what about this? Well, how's it in, you know how's it impact that? What does it look like when this? What about senior leadership? What about and as you're, you start going in and they tell you those things, do you say in your tonality say, "Oh, really? Oh man, yeah, mm -hmm. I get that." Hmm. Yeah, and you, your tonality, you bring that out. It 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 develops a really strong connection very very fast yeah you, you know, know how i i drill it go ahead yeah. i'm sorry no no as you're saying but yeah it's, it's that it's that you don't forget to use the tonality it's that it's that you know what i say it's sometimes when i do some cold call training i talk about sticky scripts it's like if you the stickier your your script or stickier your tonality that the actually the longer your, your strict your script can be because they're going to stay with you longer. They're, you're not going to lose them as fast, right? A monotone script read really fast has no stickiness. You're going to lose them really quick. But someone who's really into it and just the tonality and, and, and when you do this and you say that, <laughs> uh, and, and it's like a seduction with your voice. And it, the sticker you are, the less likely you're going to lose them midway through your shit, right? And But yet – but do that with all of your conversations to a certain degree, you know, yeah. it makes the conversations just sticky and, uh, and helps like, like the scripts are after you picked up your grandfather's stash in the backyard, sticky scripts, sticky scripts. <laughs> that's where I learned it. That's, so, that's right. I... So David, I shared this in one of our, our things. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh. the, the, the best way that I teach, especially new people to make it nice and simple to get to that emotion stuff without having to do anything fancy is the three-step approach and be an order taker be a job taker be an interview taker start there fine as soon as i tell you something that's the first part give it to me what's your why are you looking to move whatever it is give me that one thing perfect nice easy what is it define that for me like what does that mean like play stupid every time like when you say i i want something more challenging oh you want challenging Okay, well, what does challenging mean to you? Well, uh, all right, that's the second step. The next one, which is critical, is why. And that gets you right there. Why? Tell me, why do you need some more? Don't just assume it. Why? Then they'll tell you why. Because I'm when I wake up every, because I can't stand what I, right now, I'm just bored out of my mind. All right, when you say, what do you mean? Uh, why? Because I look at the same thing day in and day out. My job now is no divert. That's the conversation you want to get into. And that's the stuff you write down in your ATS or your CRM or the combo of the two. And that's when it's time to talk to David again. And I'm pitching David a job or I'm work with closing him that we get into that. That, oh, look, God, what it must be like on Sunday night. for Like, that's when you get into it because they've told you that. And, you, and, that's, yeah, and, that, and that's, they lead to wonderful conversations. And, and, and on top of that as well, here's uh, I have two points on that. Uh, one is how it can develop your, your future scripts, but also, uh, 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 well, okay. So I'll, I'll say this when you, uh, when you're doing that, when you're listening to those emotions, one of the best things you could do, people don't realize this, but they, they recruiters, we tend to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And so when you ask a question, you say, well, what is, what does it mean? Huh. So what does it mean when it impacts blank right always so really? i'm from missouri silence. show me what and, what yeah what? but always what yeah, why yeah but it, yeah but what i mean is like the silence that what i mean when oh, yeah huh it because people we, we get it's uncomfortable so we want to make ourselves feel better we talk over it right and so it's that you is that is that really judicious use of just silences and the, and because it it's a, a seductive silence when when, when when you want somebody to to pay attention to you what do you really do? You go, you, you go down, right? Have silence. You, go, you draw them in. Shut up. It's so big, yeah. David. We, I put this in one of the you know? posts that I posted on the group uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. It was about cold calling and it was about negotiations. That was the next one. And, and, um, in the negotiations, I said, you know, he who talks first loses, and, you know, and it's the same thing. Whenever you throw it, like if you go, what are your fees? Well, my fees are about 30% of first year salary. But, you know, and then, you know, you just have this need to keep on talking. Like the answer is shut up. Just 
wait, and let's, because what, let's be silent for 10 seconds on air. Like I'm going to throw that out to you and look how painful it is. Right. People don't understand that. You're not looking at a minute or two. So David, yeah, what I'd yeah, like to revel do in is, it though. Revel yeah, in it. what I like to do is, uh, you know, work with you on a retained basis, charge you 30% up front. That's four seconds. Okay. That was four seconds of pain. That was uncomfortable. Well, that's so. Here, here's the thing too, and 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 it piggyback off that. Piggyback and again, that's a double piggyback. Out of the gutter. You're scaring that's me today. A double, that's a double piggyback. Yo, I love that. That's called a, uh, an Indonesian. No kidding. What are those like names they have for everything? <laughs> like the like the triple Lindy. What movie? <laughs> triple Lindy. <laughs> that was the Do Rodney Dangerfield back to school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Uh, so. Um, so, but wow, I'm on fire that, today. By uh, the way, with the movies. One thing, like I know a lot of trainers talk about, like the doctor frame, and I'm not a huge fan of that um, that analogy because what people tend to think it means is just asking zinger questions, and which is part of it, sure, you know, in, in the diagnosis of a problem. But <laughs> if they're all doing just just zinger questions, zinger questions, and it's yeah, but 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 when you go to the doctor and they're about to tell you something serious, what do they do? Well. Tell me about this or whatever, you know. Hmm. Okay. So, you know what? All right. Does it hurt when you do that? They have that, that, that they bring it down and they get it serious. They have silences like there. It, it really causes the other person to take what they say seriously. That's the true doctor frame, not just asking a bunch of zinger questions. That's good, but you have to have that mentality. Um, right. And that's, and that helps, helps, uh, 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 put you in that frame of you're there to solve that problem, but you're not there to just ask some zinger questions because your trainer told you to ask him, you know, uh, but in everyone's and, defense, I think they're there because mm -hmm. they're laughing so much inside that they need that delivery to start processing their brain. Like there's no way they're, they're, they're sitting there going, Oh my God, I can't believe this guy's telling me or this girl's telling me that's what's happening. Well, well, actually, and also piggyback off a triple piggyback. Wow. Uh, now it is, uh, and I, I meant to say this earlier, another great thing about listening to those pains that you mentioned, asking those, those why questions, uh, some of the best lines you'll ever get in your scripts come directly from the people who tell you their pains because, and you should write them out, like, think like, oh man, that was good. I'm going to use this because what happens is when you use a script from, from a trainer, Typically, it's 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 to get you started. It's a crutch. What happens is it's super generic. So you need to take it, strip away all the, all the extraneous stuff. Remember the foundation of it, but then layer in all the things that your market tells you. So, for example, when I uh, one of the lines I uh, would always use with my my prospects is I talk to them about about the in the, and I work in SAP for those who don't know. I would talk to say an SAP director and I'd say some of the effect of, yeah, you know, you got those extensors of the world up in the border and some of the funny stuff, but you got to pay the price now to anybody else. It doesn't make sense. But, but I remember I had a director tell me that once he says, yeah, I'm sick and fucking tired of these consulting companies up in the border room selling the things that they, all these, all these projects that sound good, but they make no sense. And I've got to deal with it. Right. So what I did is I, I, when I say that, I, I, I let them know that I'm a player. I know what I'm talking about. I really am a specialist. I'm not, you know, I, I know your pain. It's kind of like if I tell a recruiter, I may have, you may have heard this before, but in, if I'm trying to sell recruiter lead gen, lead gen services, I, I can talk about, yeah, you know, uh, I can help you uh, uh, smooth out your, your peaks and valleys and your lead gen and yada, yada, yada. Right? That, that's great. Or I can say, hey, you know what I do? Uh, you know that fear that you might have of coming home one day and your 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 wife sit you down at the dinner table and saying, "Honey, maybe you should find a real job." <laughs> I have to get rid of that. <laughs> then you know, like, oh shit, he knows what he's talking about, right? Because that I I hit on a nerve, right? Oh, it's but so you're funny not gonna get said. that unless you talk to your people about their pains to piggyback off of that. So I'm not going to call that a quadruple because it's my first. So it's a first piggyback for me, <laughs> but we're in a 3.1 piggyback ratio. I, and I thought this was maybe too soon. It was a whole, I don't want to get into black lives matter because I personally totally understand it. And, and I don't come from the school mm -hmm. of people questioning that, which again, I know there's people out there. Well, all lives matter. That's not their point. The point is black lives matter. Also, they've just left the also part off on the, on the cardboard. Um, and I, and I was joking with someone, and I, I didn't really want to go public with it. Um, recruiter lives matter. 
Now, because it sounds to be a real wise ass, but RLM, and it's not really recruiter lives matter. It's what I was going to talk, recruiting jobs matter because Mm -hmm. of exactly what you just said. I could, I could not believe how many people say, get a real job, get a real life. That how, how recruiters are viewed by some people as a necessary evil. And they refer to that a lot or as maybe only better on the totem pole, on the food chain to what? Car sale, use car sales people? Not even in the car. Not even, if, yeah. if, if you want to call the oil and the engine a necessary evil, okay. <laughs> That's right. But it's, but they it's do, still right? necessary. But so it just yeah. gets a bad rap. And 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 again, because there's some bad apples, right? Or yeah, as they're saying in the media apples. all the time now, which I can't stand, the bad actors. Why'd that come up this bad week? Actors. Everywhere. Bad actors well, was the term of the week. The bad actors in, in the last two weeks of the protest. Bad actors. Bad, well, what, a look, look, term. what a stupid term. Bad actors. It is stupid. It is stupid term. Um, uh, although I, I will say, though, I will say when it comes to uh, uh, all right. So, so when it comes to that, right. So when it comes to you know, the, the way people view recruiters um, and, and they're bad actors, bad apples, whatever you want to call them in a great economy, you know, what happens is what you can make, you make a great living, be the commodity recruiter and work in kind of in, in the, in the, in the, in the, Let's be a good example. Get a job order, taking the job description, redacting the client name, putting it up on the job description, and then on the same on the same job board that your client has their job and bidding on information asymmetry. They apply to you first. You call them fast enough before. I mean that shit is is horrible. Not calling your candidates back. Uh, you know all these different things that could, people complain about recruiters uh, is because it's a great economy and it allowed people to make money and a living. If they lose a client, oh well, there's another one. You know, and and I think this is going to really expose the good from the bad. Or, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I wasn't the best recruiter in the first recession, and that was my downfall. But I learned, right? I learned, and I became better. You know, and and I think this recession or depression, whatever you want to call it, can be a blessing if you look at it that way. Or you can bitch about it and 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 have fun with that. Well, David, so with, with you brought up if I you know? if I could extract one amazing thing for people to get from today's show. It's something you just spit out and moved on really quickly, and it's so important. And and I'm glad that you said it. It was calling people back. Do you know that when I was with Adeco and and it was global president, thirty billion dollar company, so we spent millions of dollars on on analysis and surveys. We did a global study on what what upsets people about recruiting firms. What do they love? What are the biggest frustrations they have? Do you know the only one thing that was in common was the number one answer in every country? Oh, I was guess what that, it is. that it was what you just said. Yeah. Not getting oh no, 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 I'm saying the first thing was not having a job for me. Nothing you can do about that. That but so the, the one you can't control. Number two, globally, out of all the things you can come up with, they don't call me back. Globally, yeah. everywhere. Hundreds of thousands of surveys. My God, easy. You can make it fast. You can preface it by, hey, listen, I want to give you a call back. I got to run in two minutes, but I didn't want to keep you hanging. Just call them back. Most people, they'll even if they just get the voicemail from you and you prep it, leave a voicemail to maybe encourage them not to call you back. But hey, listen, just want to let you know I'm looking, I'm looking for you. Like, get their voicemail. Call them when you know they won't be able to pick up or whatever it is. But call them back, David, is. I, I can't begin to tell you how I made the mistake of calling people back when I first got in the business. I was t- because oh, what I mean, a what a rude. <laughs> but that's a rookie mistake. Like, Look at this guy. That's right. Can you, can you and, and, but people started like you don't have time yeah. to do that. And um, but it was by accident, really. And my, the best client that I had for years after was this out of work. CFO kind of guy, way too expensive in the normal market, been out of work for a year. I called him back. He told me, Neil, really, I, I mean, this is 30 years. Neil, you are the only person that's called me back. I'm like, well, you know, you're human. And of course I would. And he became my bet. Like, what I, I can't even begin, what I build with him, a million bucks? I don't even know how much I probably. Like, that's it all happens. that it takes. Bec- well, and it, and I, I'm on the same, you're on the same side, right? As a yeah, consumer, well, well, when the it problem happens. is, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is, you know, is, is it, it's the same bringing it all back around. It's the same thing you talked about before about people are more likely to run from pain than pleasure. What is pain? But so telling somebody, no, it's painful. So what do they do? They just don't call. Right. And they make, and it gets worse. Uh, uh, same reason why not digging into pains, not digging into pains and asking an uncomfortable question and being silent. 
is uncomfortable. So you know what they do? They don't ask those questions or they talk over yep. to cover the uncomfortable silence. So in essence, what happened, the happens is it's not using silences, not asking the hard questions, not digging into pains, uh, not uh, not calling candidates back, uh, all all the way through to everything else. Phone reluctance, every everything falls back to selfish behavior, right? And so what I, I always so the way I look at it, and maybe kind of weird, but. And I'm not a religious guy, honestly, but but you look at back in in the early Christian days, you, you know, you had the, the prophets out there on the mound and they're preaching and they're getting they're getting you know fed to the lions or whatever, right? They they had a lot of resistance, but they believed in the message, right? When you are a recruiter and all you're doing is putting asses in seats because you're a commodity recruiter, not a lot to believe in. Okay, fair enough. But when you really have something to offer and you it really is than everybody else's and you know it can help if they just listen to you well then goddamn then that's what gives you the fire in the belly to do the uncomfortable things and to pick up the phone and to and be aggressive now and this economy that needs you right now and everybody says don't sell don't be aggressive that was all the time fuck you right now at the time well, I, get well, yeah, the we talked about that shows ago what there's nothing you know wrong with saying? selling I, I said, it, but you still hear this, and I'm like, it, it, you're, you're you're being selfish, right? When 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 in reality, you know, as Zig Ziglar always says, if you uh, selling Ziglar. is caring, and if you old. care, you must sell. If you really believe, you gotta sell it, and you don't sell it, you're being selfish. Uh, I'm done. Where's my mic? I want to drop it. I know drop. that's Zig Ziglar. Um, Zig Ziglar, the man. Yeah, if you wanna guarantee that Sorry. something doesn't oh. happen don't try you know and i get a horrible zig ziglar uh impersonation uh, <laughs> sorry everybody i, I uh I zig ziglar no one knows who he is zig uh, ziglar is a uh, oh, really old old sales guy old and that's not actually his real name you know that's so go figure his real name was zig steven ziglar um which a lot of people were, were no, yeah, it's a, Zig Ziglar's the Zig, <laughs> Zig, Zig Steven, Ziglar. it's not Zigmund. It's Zig, <laughs> Zig, what, <laughs> what is it? Zigmund. Zig, we're gonna Zig name Ziglar our son sounds Zigmund. like he almost sounds like one of those old, old cartoony villains with the zoot, with the zoot suit, <laughs> and Zig, Zig, you know, you know, Zig Ziglar and his henchmen, the Zigs. I don't know. Um, no, his, his name growing but, up was Zigmund, and and the cool kids, you know, because he was in the cool group, of course, when you named Zig, and they called him Ziggy. And it stuck. Oh, so it was really, sick, you know, so um, it was big. But by the way, guys, I do apologize about going off, off, uh, you know, to some people don't like the curse words. If you're listening, if your kids are listening, uh, I apologize, in a, uh, you know, for that. But I just feel very, 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 very strongly uh, that it is selfishness that holds so much of us back from our higher purposes and from helping our community and helping everybody else. It's easy to be, as they say, an armchair activist. Right, easy to do that, but no, it's harder finding someone that needs that help and marketing them. But you know, but all you need to do to play off on that. Now I'm going to piggyback. The only thing you need to do is have that work once, have one success story when someone didn't want to hear from you, or someone wanted to deal with other people, someone didn't want to be sold to, whatever the objection is, we call whatever you want. And have one success story. And then for the love of God, please put this in your scripts. Put this in what you talk about because that's what sells people. The, so, David, Neil, I mean, this, uh, listen, we're good. Or how dare you sell them? Listen, I get it. Let me tell you about David, who didn't want to have anyone moderate his group with him, who didn't want to hear from anyone. This, when we talk, after we talked for 10 minutes, we were like soulmates on it. Like you need to tell the story of the client that is happy with the other agency that mm -hmm. doesn't want to deal with anyone except for their trusted advisor right now that won't pay your fees because it's too expensive. You could dwell our fees. We get the best service in the market. Tell Everybody the story. The, best service, Everyone, right? the only thing that could be truly unique to you are your truly unique real stories. So just tell them about the, I get it, David. Like, why on earth would you pay 30% when people are giving you 20? I'm with you. I'm not arguing. I'm with you. Makes 100% sense. The best way I could explain it to you is, let me tell you about Jack Lula over at Sony. Same deal. He was working with people at 15%. But I'm his best vendor, for lack of a better word now. And here's why. Here's why. Here's what he says. 
That's in fact, yourself. actually uh, to 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 piggyback again. All right, that, a fifth piggyback. Let's let's yeah, five pick. Let's, let's back. Do, a let's do back. Some, let's do some um some off or some mild offer slash closing journey. Because actually, speaking of that, speaking of that 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 social proof as we talked about, which yeah. is you know people that the testimonials like look at Bob, look at he, he accomplished. So um, I was having a conversation with uh, somebody today about this and uh, talking about how when you when you make an offer. And let's say you you're offering a commodity service, you know, fifteen percent, fifteen percent. It's all the same shit that you're not really selling anything Watch really. Your mouth, but I'm uh, with you, yeah, yeah. But but let's say you're offering a thirty percent service compared to the market to twenty, and then obviously you have to have uh, something different to offer, right? Maybe a roadmap or here's how we do it. Right. right, we believe but, that customer service is paramount. But the, but here's a uh, but yeah, that's uh, so stupid. <laughs> but um, but uh, our clients look, come first, but, David. But, but when you look at your so. promise, think about your promise, right? Uh, I always have this joke about no one wants to see this, how the sausage is made. And I was like, not really. If you're, if you're selling the finest sausage in the world, you want to see how it's made. It's why, it's why Corvette shows the, the, the cars in the production line, because you, they want to show you the care they put in. So when you make a bold promise when you say, here's what I can do for you. And yes, it costs more, but here's what I can do. Right. But, but there's a lack of trust there. Okay. So how, how do you do that? All right. Well, so here's where it is. This is I call I, I call it high, medium, low in closing. You would make your high promise. Here's our here's a bold promise that we make, right? Now, here's how we're going to get you there, Mister Miss Prospect. And you do your roadmap. This is a mid level promise. Step one, we're going to do this. Step two, step three. So we have we have all figured out. Boom, 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 boom. And this is your low promise. Now, now, first off, the mid. Does that sound like? that would work for you yes action so here's all the support you get along with it every week we're going to do a call and we're going to get a, a client portal you get the a report so you get all so it's i call it high medium low sales you got your high your high promise you've got your roadmap and you've got your all the support it's like an accelerator cheap 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 plug here but when i say you know, <laughs> hey my bold promise i can i can radically transform your lead gener generation Oh, that's a big promise. Yes, but here's how we do it. Step one, step two, step three, and all the support you get, really calls, you get a community, you get this. It's when you look at how when when companies or the online coaches, whatever, they make offers, they do it in that manner. That's actually how they do it. Uh, and you can apply that to your own um, offers. And then when there's still some of that doubt, you say, and by the way, here's Bob, who just came, he, who I, I just filled his CFO position. He went through our exact process and he was, he was skeptical as well. But he took a chance and, or whatever, right? But it's that, it's that same sort of, yeah. of, of philosophy, right? Um, because it, when you do that, you like the roadmap. That's a huge roadmap. It's a big promise, roadmap, support, and then testimony. Then bam, that is a, that's a one, two, three, four punch. But that's really know, it's, now, it's so easy to me for having trained it and doing it for 30 years. And you make it sound so easy too. And it, yeah. it, it really is, if you break it down to these fundam fundamental elements of doing this business, because when I get sold to and people are reading me a script, when as a back to the script thing, if you can pull off a script really well, get out of the business. Be an actor, man. You're like, mm -hmm. like the, a few people can pull that off, right? But so even if you give me like regular stick, like, I don't get how, why isn't everyone just telling me their stories? Like, and why isn't everyone yeah, like, I, I don't want to hear from voice. them, right? I don't want to hear from anyone selling me anything. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, very few people do. So unless they sell really well. Cause no, 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 I'm, I'm saying in the beginning, I'm saying before, the yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the first second, I don't want to be sold to. The second they start telling me some stories or explaining to me things I haven't thought about with a product, or here, look, here's let me cut to the chase here. And I'm like we talked about last week. I'm I'm insurance agent four sixty seven those calls in the last twenty three days. But I'm just gonna tell you something. But here, let me tell you about uh, something really cool that's been going on. One of my clients, and here's what he had to say. And Again, great stuff. Oh, Michael G. Cox, comment my favorite. Michael uh, G. Cox, Holly, he's the accelerator member. Yeah. Hey, so uh, we're running out of time here, and well, actually, we're, spo we're supposed to have our first guest today, and we are not going to have time for our guest. No, I'm being oh, funny. Oh man, we don't. You know, we, don't <laughs> we don't. We don't take kindly to guests, right? Actually, actually, real quick, before we even do that, I do yeah. want to say one more thing. When yeah, yeah. I posted this in the group, but for anybody who didn't see it, check this out. This is. I don't know if you guys can see this. Here. Oh, love that. This was. Yeah, it was. Let me try to. How do I get this to show big? 
You just had it before. You had it before. The first time you did it, it was big. Uh, let's just do that. Yeah. Yeah. So this I was a, uh, a picture I found on 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 the on the line, as you kids say nowadays. I paid for your I paid your parking meter for you. Imagine what else I'm willing to do to protect your car. And it's a farmer's insurance agent with his card, dude. That that is. <sighs> Even in a commodity-driven market like car Are you car about to insurance. cry, dude? I, seriously, were you just about to I was cry? beautiful. Getting... Game recognizes game. You, when, 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 if you play basketball and you see a beautiful like 360 tomahawk, you're just like, oh, it's so beautiful. When I see that, I, I appreciate the game. And I appreciate, you know, what can you do in your marketing? What can you do? Uh, so here's, right. here's hate the one game. More thing. Hate the game, but don't hate the player. He, you know what? Here, here's something. You want to – do you want – all right. Do you want to get in in with a super high level individual who's not returning your calls? Why don't you try to may not work, but why don't you go to go to that person's LinkedIn and do a screen share on Loom and do a LinkedIn optimization five minutes with them and how they can optimize their profile so they can attract the very best talent because people want to work for people, people want to work for leaders and send it. Send it to 10 people a week, 10, 10 CEOs a week. I guarantee not everybody's going to respond, but you're going to get some. some it's some called like, reciprocity. Oh, is, it's one of the yeah. top. It's in my. It's in my ebook on hypnotic selling. It's one of the biggest influencing factors in in dealing with human beings. Yeah. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Well, so I saw this, David. Did you try to figure out how we could do it as recruiters? I went through like it says. I paid your parking meter for you. Imagine what else I'm willing to do to protect your car. I'm like, so how can we do that as recruiters? Well, just and, what I said that 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 thing I just did a five, right, right, five right, right. optimization thing. But I yes. wanted to mean copy this almost exactly. So here's my thought. Oh, I'm oh, gonna okay. pay as a recruiter. Go out and pay people's. Cobra benefits or healthcare benefits for a year. Pay eight thousand dollars for the benefits, and then go and write them. Hey, I paid for your healthcare benefits for a year. Imagine how I would take care of your career and your job if you work with me. And then, how much business are you get doing that? I bet you could scale that like, <laughs> like two times, <laughs> maybe three times. Can you imagine? But seriously, if you pay someone's benefits, oh, hi, I just I just wrote a check on your behalf for eight thousand dollars. Will you work with me? No, it's not a great business model, but it would work. Yeah, not I a guarantee good business it model. would work. You're getting a call back, <laughs> not, David. Not a good business model <laughs> at all, sir. <laughs> it's not oh, going to be man. in like, you know, everyone seems to come out of Stanford, right? Every idea of every like Uber and StubHub and Google, right? Everything came out of Stanford. They're not doing that. That's not making the final round in Stanford, I don't think. Mm -mm, that no. business model. But, but that's, that's, that's on the ground, getting your hands dirty, sales game and and having them that mentality with every single thing that you do what can you do extra and i think right now it's going to take that extra just take go go it's like all they say when you work out so on the last rep right it's it's all in that last little bit of effort that you give every single little thing that you do and it's a game of inches man and game of inches win super bowls that's all i'm trying to tell you have that mentality win super bowls but um you know or you know if you're if you're not in the u.s and you play some other sort of game like soccer you know whatever the what do they call that the world cup the world world soccer they call championship. football they call it football yes oh yeah they stole our name <laughs> got it got it there's people who believe that it's funny <laughs> when i was i when i first traveled to england i was with this guy totally non-global he was my boss but he never really traveled before totally u.s centric same deal like they stole our name even though soccer football has been around like for probably hundreds of years it seems before american football um we were in a, a pub in england and they played it was at the time i'm dating myself but they were playing bruce springsteen born in the usa and he looked at me as like it's unbelievable how much they steal from us i'm like hi he's like all our music they got our music they steal our restaurant i'm like like music he brings up like yeah we don't steal any english music from the UK, like no British bands, like Rolling Stones and the Who, and you keep going yeah. on and on. It just struck me as so ignorant and and funny. Yeah, I guess I guess we stole rap from them, and we stole uh, we stole uh, what the automobile from them, and we stole. You're right. I, I guess America doesn't come up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not it. Oh no, don't turn this into being anti-American. We, we stole 13 colonies. From we them. did we steal stole, a country from them, but right, oh, yeah, so. we stole 13 colonies. Yeah, look, all we had to do was, uh, you know, commit massive genocide and, uh, and create slaves to build it. And we are an amazingly free country. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get political a, on that. But, yeah, uh, yeah, political on this. But I will, but I will tell you this. Um, 
Uh, I do love all my English clients. I apologize in advance. Please don't cancel your memberships. <laughs> right. I love you guys. I, I, I can't believe Did you hear what David Patterson, did you hear what DSP had to say today? Good I? I don't know why. <laughs> Anytime I do an English accent, it's either really good or it sounds like um, Dick Van Dyke doing his horrible accent. You know, Mary Poppins. Hello, Mary Poppins. It's so you do better. Mary Poppins. It's horrible. It's still better than mine. It's still much, much better than oh, I well, cannot do really, accents in my life. Oh, really? So if I did, I'm not apologizing. You can use a very posh British accent. All right, so David, I mean, we're kind of out of time, and I was joking yeah, about right. our – everyone's wondering, well, where's our guest speaker? Uh, the answer is that um, we had some difficulty with our guest speaker and wasn't able to make today's meeting. Uh, and – Oh, sorry. Yeah, but next week? Next week. Mr. Rex Rosen. Rich Rosen, very Rich good. Rosen. And the oh, week man. after that, we have the animal. Did, did you know that Rich Rosen is number 45 out of 200 search firms, according to the Forbes list? Now, granted, 45 is okay. I was hoping he got 44, what? but whatever. But he was number 45 on that. Uh, Dude, yeah. go ahead. 45 it's, out of the it's, Forbes it's, top 200. 45. The names in there were global companies. It the is global not, there were yeah. $30 billion companies, $20 billion divisions. It is not based on attractiveness. I tell you that right now. <laughs> we'll we'll figure that out next week. Yeah, but Richard and then we had the, the animal is um, Neil arranged that one. I was on the animal show last year. I was on that show last year. Yeah, Once. well, we'll we'll get even. It's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we didn't do the news segment today because we talked about a lot of stuff that was in the news, and it was all the stuff that we uh, we could have had. Let's just do it for fun before we sign off. The uh, what it would have looked like if we did the news. Oh, uh, it was that you have the, the it would have looked something like this. Ding 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 So that's it, no real news for today. So David, any any last words? Uh I love you all. Thank you all for listening. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Hey, thank you for watching Editors and Boxers Talking Smack. Here's the love editors box. Here's the love talking smack. Join the show every Friday, 12 noon Eastern, live in the Headhunter and Executive Recruiter community. Make sure you click on these boxes here and watch some of these videos or something. I don't know what's going on here. I just work here.